Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate uh, an RPG type battle that I put together using some of the things that we've learned in the last tutorials. Here as you can see works pretty well. Granted, it's not going to be the best example of programming this possible, but it is going to be the easiest thing for you to understand. But yeah. Anyways, let's take a look at the code. So here you see I, I started off by setting the sprites for my fish and my cat. Then I set the colors as variables so that I can use them in my my text boxes. These are a few uh, variables that I've set. This is the enemy HP, this is the HP, this is the SP, and a potion, and turn, which, you know, as you, as you can guess, it, it tells which whose turn it is to attack. Now this this is good practice right here. Anytime you're making a game or a program that has a whole lot of uh, labels and stuff in it, you want to make a main loop that kind of goes subs to everything in your program. It's, it's just a better way of organizing things and it helps you uh, create more of a flow in your program. And you can go back to this central area and kind of see what all is going on. Uh, first, I start off with the HP bars, and you know I just located and printed them on the screen. Uh, as you can see, in G line, on one of them I subtract the EHP. Now the reason why I subtract it is because uh, this G line it makes the the health bar. Whenever I subtract from that 121, it makes the health bar go down. So right now the EHP is zero, meaning it subtracts to zero, meaning the 121, the full health bar is still there. Now, uh, as I add more, the health bar is going to go down, and at minus 64 is whenever the health bar goes all the way down. And I did generally the same thing for your health bar in the SP and this is the first stuff that I started making. This is the main menu right here for the fight. You know, you got fight, magic, bag, run. And uh, if you watch the text box tutorial, this should all make pretty good sense to you. Here I've got if HP is greater than 64, go to at die. That means, you know, if your HP is, the, the health bar is all the way down and he's subtracting 64 from it, then, you know, it goes to the death animation. And you haven't seen that yet, but it's it's just the cat laying dead. It's not really all that important. But, let's see. And then I have, uh, let's see, if button equals 2, you know, if button equals 8, these are just, it moves the... It, it it selects stuff, you know. Oh, here's an important one. If button, see how this one, I actually put it out, and then I put the three inside the parentheses. Now, three means that it only will return 16 whenever the button is released. And I believe two is whenever it, like, it only goes as soon as it's pressed, and one, it, it triggers all the time. It's basically, like, the same as putting zero. Now, don't quote me on that, but... That, that's kind of important to know. Uh, the reason why I did it was so that whenever, because whenever I started pressing A to select one thing in the menu, it would select everything throughout the entire menu and just go non-stop after pressing A. So I made it to where you have to actually release the A button before it actually returns 16. And uh, this, you know, it, it I could have labeled these better. But I did fight to magic as in like this is the cursor moving and of course, you know, you print a blank space 
to get rid of anything that you printed on the screen. It's a lot easier than just clearing the entire screen of all the print. You just find out what you need to erase and just print blank spaces over it. Yeah, and let's see. Now we have the fight menu. This is, you know, what opens up whenever you select fight. And you see button equals two. I did all of this so that it would flow a little bit better. Once you actually get a hold of it and play it, then you'll see more how this goes. And, and you'll kind of see uh, what I did with the 3D here, and, and you'll start to understand more of how the 3D depths work and how you can work them into your game to make it look really great. Uh, just whenever Petite Computer releases, just remind me to post the code for this so that you can get it off of the server. Here's the magic menu. And, you know, that pretty much works the same way. Now here, you know, I, I did things like CLS, GCLS, so that the menu will go away. You know, and, and because of this, you know, several times I have to call back to the menu for it to print back whenever I need it. Because GCLS, there, as far as I know, there isn't a way to just erase some graphics. I haven't really looked into it too much. You know, graphics isn't the most interesting thing in the world whenever it comes to a petite computer. I don't think anybody's just like, geez, you know, I'd really like to draw some lines. Or anything like that, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll learn more about that and get back to you. But uh, here, then we have the bag menu that gets to the potion. This is what the potion actually does. You know, here it returns HP to zero, meaning that it'll subtract zero from the HP. And this subtracts the potion so that you know your potion disappears in the menu. You can't just keep using potions over and over again. Turn equals false, so right after you use the potion, the fish is going to attack you. Here's the zap, and you know, uh, I highly suggest that you take the time to look up everything that's going with the SP set and the spanum and stuff like that, because it's it's really important to, to get a lot of practice. I'm not really going to go over it again. I've already gone over all of these. That's why they all have their own separate videos so that you can you can look them up and I don't have to explain them again and again and again. Now here uh I added something that is a little bit more uh to where it you know it, it doesn't the zaps don't do the same amount of attack every time. See cuz I got random 10 so it's going to do from 0 to 10 and then I added plus 5 because you know it's going to suck if your attack only does, like, one damage. <clears throat> so this this way, at least it does five, and the most that it can do is 15. And, okay, let's go down to Bash. And you see Bash is, does a little bit less. It's a physical attack. It doesn't take any SP, so I figured, you know, half as much was all right. And, uh, like, the... The animation for Bash was like serious though. I used uh, four tiles together to make that whole animation. But you know, look it up and you'll see all of that. I believe there's a PDF out. Right now it's only in Japanese, but I'm sure that by the time uh, you get this application, it'll be in English and there'll be like a little table that has where all these sprites are. And instead of using my own custom sprites, I'm trying to use these sprites that come with it so that it kind of gives you a better idea of how those work. Uh, this is the no SP. It'll print out, you know, not enough SP. Uh, this is the enemy's death. Prints the little cross. This is the fish attacking. This first line right here makes sure that whenever the fish attacks, you know, uh, he's not going to attack if he's dead. Like, if his HP is greater than 64, then go ahead and kill him. We don't want him getting in one last attack before he dies. This was made out of a whole lot of trial and error. Like Pretty much what you want to do is you just want to write a couple of lines, press start and run it, see how it goes, and work from there. You don't want to get too discouraged whenever things don't work out, because most of the time they don't. Okay, this is you know, the fish's attack, he blows the bubbles, yada yada. Now, 
I, I did all of this weight SP clear stuff just because at the time, I, I don't know, for some reason I was having trouble using Spanum for all of this, but I highly re recommend that you use Spanum for everything involving animation because it's much, much easier than doing all of this, and you don't want your program stalling and waiting constantly to animate things. You, you want it to keep running. And because I, I stalled, I have to keep on go subbing back to HP bars to make sure that the HP bars don't clear off the screen whenever the CLS comes up because CLS and GCLS, the HP bars, are made up out of the text. Uh, and yeah, those HP bars, those are made from just, you know, you can type more than just letters. If you haven't found that out yet, there are symbols included on the keyboard as well. And uh, yeah, here's the death. But yeah, that's that's pretty much a quick overview of how that all works. And, you know, just copy that down. You can play around with this a lot and make a lot of your own little attacks. And, uh, you know, just just play with it. I definitely wouldn't mind if this spawned a few pretty cool uh, RPGs. Because that was one thing I didn't see a whole lot of. On the old petite computers, uh, there was a somebody made a Pokemon game, but that was about it. But anyways, uh, I'm, that, that's pretty much it. And you can see how all the things that we've been learning so far can combine together to make actual games and not just random stuff.